I'll go to your question. We'll read out. Later, we'll come for your concept. As I told you, any proper any assets provided to employee by employer, one fifth of the salary it is on your seven lakh eighty thousand. Seven lakh. The rent of unfurnished bungalow, as per government rule, it is one thousand. Hello everyone. This is your other sir. Let's learn with your student first grade college, the temple of excellence. So we are in the session five of your topic called your tax management. I know tax management. You are the fifth sem subject now. We are doing the topic. It is nothing but income from salary. Now, income from salary. In the previous sessions, what we did, we did concept with problems. As I told you, we will not explain. I will not explain you complete concept in one class. As soon as we complete one problem, you will be done with each concepts. Now, so what will be the agenda for the day? The agenda for the day it is very simple. the concept as well as problems concept as well as problems now i'll go to your question we'll read out later we'll come for your concept mr atul is a district magistrate of agra he is living in furnished bungalow provided by the government free of rent his salary is 65000 per month now The rent of unfurnished bungalow, as per government rule, it is one thousand. It is paid by whom? Employer. But he is not living in unfurnished house. He is living in furnished house now. But its fair rental value is seven thousand five hundred per month now. He is provided furniture value of rupees twenty thousand. As I told you, any furniture or assets given to employee. By employer. Now we have to consider ten percent cost of that particular asset. Now, how much it is mentioned? It is twenty thousand. On twenty thousand, ten percent has to be calculated. Now he is getting rupees five hundred per month as entertainment allowance. Remember, he is a government employee. If he is a government employee. For entertainment allowance, we have some calculation. Remember, up to five thousand entertainment allowance is exempted. R R one fifth of his salary exempted. R actual received, whichever is less, has to be deducted. Again, I will repeat three things we have to do in case of entertainment allowance. Five thousand is the maximum limit. Our actual received are one fifth of his salary. Out of these three, whichever is less, we have to deduct from entertainment allowance. It is for government employee. Clear? Yes. So once we done with that, ten percent DA has to be calculated. They have not mentioned what is the DA value. We have to calculate on salary. If the salary is one lakh, on the ten percent, ten thousand will be his DA. As per this calculation, whatever salary we get on the ten percent, we should calculate as DA. Now, this will be your solution. As I told you, for while doing solution, you have to mention computation of taxable income from salary below that. For the assessment year 2020 as well as 2021. Now, in this first thing is salary. How much he was getting? He was getting 65,000 per month. Now, 65,000 multiplied with 12, it will come around 7 lakh 80,000. Now, once you done with salary, go for DA. DA means what? DNS allowance. Now, as per the question, they have mentioned that ten percent. Ten percent on what? It is always on salary. Now, so how much he was getting? Seven lakh eighty thousand. On that ten percent, if you calculate, it will be seventy eight thousand. Clear? Yes. Now. Entertainment allowance they have mentioned five hundred per month. Calculate so. 
this will be 500 into 12, you will get around 6,000. Now, your basic pay 7 lakh 80, your DA it is 10% of your salary and your entertainment allowance it is around 6,000. Now, we are done with everything, now we have to go for rent free house. He has provided with rent free house but he was in furnished house. Now, how much government fees for that employer was paying? Employer was paying rupees 1000 per month. Now, 1000 per month means this will be 1000 multiplied with 12. This will be 12,000. Now, along with that, he was provided with furnitures. What is the value of furnitures? 20,000. 20,000 on that, what is the percentage? As I told you, any proper any assets provided to employee by employer, so 10% of the cost of the asset. What is the cost of the asset? 20,000. What is the percentage? 10%. Now, on 20,000, 10%, it comes around 2,000. 12 plus 2, it will come around 14,000. 12 plus 2, 14. Total everything you will get 8 lakh 78. 7 lakh 80 plus 78 plus 6 plus 14. Now all put together you will get 8 lakh 78. Now you are doing income from salary means you have standard deduction. How much it is? 50,000. You have to minus 50. Entertainment allowance 5,000. I'll show you the working note. As I told you, actual received 6,000. One fifth of the salary, it is on your 7,80,000. 7,80,000 multiplied with 1 divided by 5. How much you will get? 1,56,000. Now, this will be your 5,000. 5,000 will be your maximum limit. Now, if you add everything, out of these three, you should consider any one, whichever is least, whichever is less. Out of three, whichever is, which is less, 5,000. You should consider 5,000 as basic exemption. Now, in this, the basic exemption 5, 50 plus 5, total 55 has to be deducted. How much taxable income from salary? It is 8,20. 3000. Now, this is all about your problem number 7. If you want, you can take a screenshot. This will be your problem. So, this is a solution for that. And this will be the working note for your entertainment allowance. So, the last problem for the day. Last problem for the day, easiest one in this. Following are the particulars of income of a woman. Previous year, 31st March 2020. Now, salary. Salary they have given 15,000 per month. 15,000 into 12, it will be 1,80,000. Now, her contribution to Prov Provident Fund was 14%. Remember, I'll go back to your concept class. Now, in this 14% of salary, employer also contributed the same amount means 14%. Now, interest credited to her provident fund 9.5%. So, as per this, remember, if it is a provident fund, up to 12%, whatever employer, not employee, employee can contribute up to 100%. But, employer contribution up to 12%, it is exempted. Above 12%, we call it as taxable. In this problem, it is 14% means up to 12%, we will not consider. Above 12%, whatever we got, we have to calculate. We have to calculate for that. Now, interest part, as per the question, they have given 9.5%. What is the limit? 9.5. As per this problem, is there anything excess? No. Why? Because they also provided 9.5. If it is 10%, 0.5% will be taxable. 
If it is 12%, 2.5% will be taxable. Remember, all PF contribution up to 12% of employer exempt, all interest part up to 9.5% is exempt. Now, she is provided by her employer with a rent free. Remember, we got a rent free. Last problem, it was not rent free, it was furnished house. Now, rent for free and furnished house in a city of population 30 lakh. We'll go back to your concept class. In that, I'll explain you. Now, rent free accommodation. Now, we already discussed about HRA, house rent allowance. This is not house rent allowance, rent free accommodation. The company itself provides you a house. Maybe it is a company's house only. Now, in case of rent free accommodation, we have three slabs. The slabs will be the population is about 25 lakh. The population is 10 lakh to 25. The population below 10 lakh. Remember these numbers. If the population above 25 lakh and the population is 25 to 10 and the population is below 10 lakh. That particular area or city has to be populated this money. Now, if it is 25 or below 25, above 10, the calculation will be 15% of your salary. What will be rent free accommodation? 15% of your salary. If the population above 10 and below 25, then this will be 10%. Then, if the population is below 10 lakh, then it will be 7.5%. Remember this, very important. If it is unfurnished rent free accommodation this will be your calculation population above 25 10 percent above 10 lakh below 25 10 percent and below 10 lakh it is 7.5 15 10 and 7.5 as per this question the population is how much 30 lakh 30 lakh means what above 25 lakh if it is above 25 lakh what is the percentage 15% on what salary? Next, proceeds of endowment policy. Remember, this endowment policy is a capital receipt. We will do it under capital gain, not under salary. Now, she paid 600 as employment tax. Whatever employment tax, we call it as expenses. We have to deduct from your salary income. Next. So you have to find out her income from salary if provident fund is recognized and provident fund is unrecognized. You have to do two times. If recognized, what will be your calculation? Unrecognized, what will be your calculation? Now, computation of taxable salary for the assessment year 2020-21. There is a common heading for all the problems. You have to write assessment year that is compulsory. Now, when the provident fund is recognized in this, first thing your salary 15,000 multiplied with 12, you will get 1,80,000. Next, value of rent free or unfurnished. As I told you, the population is about 25 lakh, so we go for 15% of salary. Now, what is the salary? 1,80,000 on that 15%. Next, employee contribu employer's contribution. We will not consider employee contribution. We consider only employer contribution. Now, under employer contribution, if it is above 12%, it has to be taxable. Now, as per this problem, the percentage is 14%. But what is the limit? The limit is 12%. How much excess paid? 2%. What is the salary? 1,80,000. Multiplied with 2%. How much? You will get 3,600. Hope you understood. If employer has given 15%, 15 minus 12, it is 3%. 3 into 1,80,000. 
If employer contributed 12%, 12 minus 12, it is zero, no calculation. If employer contributed 11%, so 11 by 12, it will be minus one, so we'll not do any calculation. Now, if you do this calculation, you will get how much? 3,600. Now, interest on provident fund, we will not consider. Why? Because it was 9.5%. As per the question 9.5, the limit also 9.5, so we will not do any further calculation. Now, add everything, you will get 2,10,600 minus your standard deduction 50,000 along with the, the tax what you paid. So, employment tax, it is 600 minus both, you will get 1,60,000. This will be your taxable salary. Hope you understood. Whatever we did, it is only for if provident fund is recognized. Now, if the provident fund is unrecognized, what will be your calculation? Same calculation, salary will be 1 lakh 80, but we will not do any calculation for your provident fund. Now, 1 lakh 80,000 and your 15% of salary, rent free accommodation, 27, it will be 2,7,000 minus 50,600. The answer will be 1,50,000, We will not consider anything about PF. Clear? Yes. This is all about your unrecognized provident fund calculation. Now, so I'll go back to this. You can take a screenshot. This will be your question. So this is your normal thing along with recognized provident fund. This is for unrecognized provident fund. So these are the notes. The proceeds of endowment life policy, as I told you, it is a capital receipt, we will not consider. Tax on employment, it is a expenses, allowable expenses, so we have deducted. Now, these notes you have to write. Anything you have not considered, anything if it is new, you have to make a note. So this is all about your today's session. We done with two problems with concepts. So understand the concept and work out the problems. Thank you.